Uh, you know, I just went on my phone yeah, and the first thing I said was, the uh, first thing I saw in the comments was, what an obnoxious cross-eyed goofball. <laughs> and I thought, fucking hell, how do they know me so well? <laughs> Oban? Yes, brother. How are you? Yes. Come on. How are you feeling? I mean, yeah. Well, look, I, uh, the performance, yeah, I mean, I took a, it took a while to get going. Um, it's been like a 16-week, 12-week training camp. Uh, so I, got, I, I was really a bit weirdly calm in the battle. I was really calm that first round. Um, so you look at the fight itself, like, he knocked me on my ass in the second. Uh, I beat the brakes off him in the third and, you know, nicked the first. So, look, I won the fight. Obviously, you've got to come on this show and, and uh, impress. But I think, I, you know, I think I did that. And, but how I'm feeling, I'm a, I'm a UFC fighter. I'm in Las Vegas holding a UFC microphone and I can call myself a UFC fighter. So how do you think I'm feeling? Where's the howl ahead? What was the game plan coming into the fight? The game plan was... Um, Watch out for his right hand and his wild strikes. So I fucked that one a bit. <laughs> um, but yeah, mix it up on him. But he surprised me with, with how good he was at getting up. I couldn't really settle on him. And then when he got back to his feet, he was super aggressive. But like the way he fought was like, you know, looking for the finish in a reckless manner. And, you know, if you go for the finish and don't get it, you're probably not going to get the decision. So... Anyone can go in there and, and throw haymakers like he was, and I just have to stay composed. Don't get me wrong now. I've, I've just come in here and beat someone with double my fights, a reigning world champion, and I, I was the underdog, and he knocked me on my And I look, he left it. I'm not trying to talk bad at him, but he left it on a stretcher. Do you know what I mean? So I know I didn't get like a spectacular one-sided finish, but... I proved that I am more than good enough to be here. That second round, how hurt were you? I wasn't hurt. I, I, I was like a bit all over the place. You know, like my, I had my head with me, but my legs were, my legs were gone. So I was just kind of like, oh, no, whoa. He's... And then um, when I seen him, like I, I recovered with, from the heavy shots. And they just reminded me about the armbar. I, f I forgot about that. Um, but yeah, uh, the... That second round, yeah, I was hurt, mate. You know, I was thinking, shit, that ref's gonna, you know, I heard him saying, fight back. I fought back, but I was hurt, but he, he gassed. And that's when I, you know, I, I took a while, I started slow. You know, if that was a five round fight, I'd have finished him. You know what I mean? I was fresh in that third round, picking him off, dropped him, and smashed his head, you know, nearly put a hole in his head with a ground and pound. So I got, I, I, I got there in the end. Talk about the emotions, you know, ups, ups and downs. You were supposed to be here a couple of years ago, suffered a loss, mm. fought your way back. Um, now you got here, you got that UFC contract. <sighs> Just how are you, man, like, what, what, what are the emotions like? <laughs> Hard work pays off, dreams come true. Bad times don't last, but bad guys do. All right. uh, and that's what I, uh, I've got written on, on my wall in my house. I've had my setbacks and that, you know. I've had to fight the killers. You see all these prospects squeaking by, fighting, fighting toilet cleaners that have a one-fight release on the UFC that get a nice little, you know, blue corner job every time. And I had to just fight that, that psychopath, you know what I mean? So, if it, <laughs> I'm just one of them guys. I, just, I, I, have took, I haven't took no for an answer, and that's why, that's why I'm up here now. You know, I said yes to this fight before I even knew who it was. A couple last ones. Obviously, you're fighting for yourself, fighting your family, but you're also fighting for Richard, man. Like, mm. You know, uh, how hard was this camp knowing he was fighting his own battle and you were fighting for him? I mean, when you say how hard was it, in a weird way, it made it easier because I kind of, I, I kind of, every time I was thinking about, uh, maybe taking a session, no, no, like rested another hour or whatever, like working night shifts, got a nine o'clock session, like, ah, oh, you know, am I just going to be, but he was turning up with chemo, taking chemo, on chemotherapy treatment, uh, and he was at the gym, so what excuse did I have? So it kind of made, 
it, it kind of made it a bit more, I, I don't know, it, it kind of made it easier in a way. Of course it was tough, but it's more motivation, you know, like fight for my family and, and all that. But that, that cockroach who won't lie down for anyone, Richard Shaw, you know, he was, he's been through the, had the worst year of his life. And he told me that um, me getting this would make it one of the best. He's had a grandson. So, yeah, that, that one was for him as much as it was anyone else. Another Welsh fighter in the UFC. All right, number four, as he says. Yeah, yeah. How does that feel? Yeah, yeah well, in fact, mate, hey, I remember in school, you know, I got two of the boys there. We made a bet saying no one can go to America until I fight there. And they've, they've, uh, they've come out, you know. So it's just, it's mad. It kind of put pressure on myself in a way because I've had this dream for so long, so it means more. So it's like when you're in them change rooms, you're like, oh, I haven't just you know, I haven't just stumbled upon this opportunity. I've been dreaming about this opportunity for, for years and years and the majority of my life. So it's about managing that pressure. And now I'm here, I feel like, you know, I'm like, ah, oh, finally, you know, the rock has come back. <laughs> yeah, so and I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. And then finally, the debut. When do you want it? you have anybody in mind? Do you want to fight in America? you want to fight in Europe? What's what's key for you? We'll see how much this tax bill is first before I uh, before I answer that one. <laughs> um, you know, look after the pennies, the pounds look after themselves. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe the John Jones undercard. Yeah. C congratulations. Yeah, thank you, Alex. Legend, bro. Who's I've, next? Is that, is that everyone? One. No, no, no. We, there's more. Hello. I just got one for you. Um, when you heard that Dana White said that he was on the fence, what, what went through your mind in that moment? I was thinking, do the right thing, Dana. <laughs> I've got another couple of rounds in me. <laughs> uh, I know I shit myself, I'll be honest. Because <laughs> uh, the, the, the young lady sat next to me, didn't get it. I thought, oh, I've just been it. It around for five minutes, you know. I've just had to. I've just kicked that every every sharp and hard part of that guy's body with my left leg, and now I'm I can just about walk on it. And have I really done that? Not to have a contract, and I've got to go back on the railways with all the boys. I was thinking, ah, oh, come on, Dana. That's why. That's why I, um, you know, we tried encouraging him when I spoke to Laura first. I did shit myself. Not gonna lie. Did you think that she deserved, you mentioned the girl next to you not getting, I don't know if you saw her fight. but did I did, yeah. Um, well, when, it, when I'm not going to lie, when he, when he said uh, there was times where he could have finished the fight, she could have finished the fight or looked for the finish, but didn't, I was thinking, oh, well, I, I was trying to finish him in that third. So he can't say that about me, you know? So I was warming up. I wasn't paying too much attention to that fight, but... Um, that's, that's shit for her, innit? But she'll come again, you know. If she's not ready, she's not ready. Dana told me, he's almost like, he said, like, good luck. You know, as if to say, like, I'll give you, be careful. He, he actually said, be careful what you wish for. So he's probably going to pull some, I don't know, Loch Ness monster out of his fucking closet or something. <laughs> but I'll be ready. <laughs> yes, bro. You mentioned there what he did to you in the second round and then ultimately what you did to him in the third round. How'd you make that adjustment and ultimately get the win right there? Well, the first time he hit me and I went down, I, I've never fully been dropped before, so I just wanted to know what it felt like. But um, the rest of the round, he definitely uh, was, was pinging me about. Yeah, that's what I would say. What was the question again? Like, how'd you make that adjustment from going from the second round to the third round? I looked at him and he had his hand on the on the top of the cage and I said, I said, you're gonna have to kill me, motherfucker. And I said, it's a bad place to be tired. So I I just thought, right, five minutes now, try and get this, get rid of him now. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I couldn't get rid of him, but I, I did all I could. Oh, don't, don't get me wrong, that decision was nerve wracking. And then that whole uh, contract process was nerve wracking, but the adjustment was, as I said, I, s I feel like I started a little bit slow. I would have liked to found my range and pinged him a little bit uh, earlier, but he was, he was, he, look how he fought me. He was coming for me like an absolute psychopath. You know what I mean? So on another night, if he fought me like that, I probably would have caught him coming in, but I just couldn't, 
couldn't quite get his time and he was really unorthodox. So hats off to him, like he's a world champion. Uh, he's had double my fights, nothing but respect. I was scared of him coming into this fight. Um, yeah, I just had to, I just know I had to get, get that job done. I weren't gonna take no for an answer. As you mentioned, a uh, fourth Welsh fighter in the UFC. Yeah, out of my gym, that is. Out of your gym? I'm not too sure about the statistics. Shake. Yeah, he's the one with the fucking stats. <laughs> so yeah. sixth Welsh fighter. You have a message for the kids coming out of that area that ultimately want to be in your shoes one day? Yeah, uh, you. If you have, if I've got kids, yeah, to all the kids in in the area, like I didn't have the best. I had a troubled time growing up. And I had a dream, and uh, I've had to work full time this whole time, you know, and I've had to fight tough guys the whole time, and I've stumbled a couple of times, I've had to retire once through like medical issues and that, and if I've got a message for any young kid coming up, if you've got, if you've got an idea and you want to be somewhere, don't, don't stop, don't take no for an answer, you know, if it's not going to be given to you, so go and fucking take it, like I just did there. Awesome. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Just one for me. I think you kind of answered it there. So now are you making the switch to full-time fighter? Are you, are you leaving your job now? And what is your job that you work on the rail? Well, is it the railroads over here, the railways? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm like a track worker. So it's like the shifts are pretty unkind, like 10 in, the, 10 in the night to 8 in the morning on the shovel. You know, I'm not getting any rest. And then I'm getting in like 8 o'clock in the morning when the sun's up getting like four or five hours sleep, straight to strength and conditioning, and then straight to training. And then I'm like, oh fuck, I got a night shift again, you know? Luckily in the, in the couple of weeks uh, leading up to the fight, the boys were like, don't worry about coming in. And they were booking me in for the shifts. Probably might get sacked for that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So you're going for physical labor jobs straight. Nah, I'm, I'm only joking, I'm only joking. <laughs> So like, what are the, you know, the, the boys on the rail? Yeah, yeah, yeah they were helping me. Out, they were helping me out, but like, yeah, you know, financially, like, I've had to be. I've been paying bills, working full time. Like, it's been a fucking a nightmare. I've got a university degree. The amount of times I sat there and gone, fucking hell, man, I could get a good job, and I'm putting myself all in the stress, going skint for what? I'm still on fucking cage warriors, and ah, oh, phone goes, you got to fight this guy. I'm like, fucking hell, where's the where's my toilet cleaners? Where are they? Do you know what I mean? Fucking hell, let me go in and have a little three-round jab fest and, and you know, catch the eye of... But I had to do it this way, and I wouldn't change it because as I go full-time now, fighting uh, in the best fighting organization in the world where I can put everything into it, you know, my dreams come true, I have a feeling I'm going to have a fucking special run. And if any of, of my past is to go by... Uh, you know, I'm not going to take no for an answer in the UFC, just like I've, I've not took a no for an answer in life. So, yeah. What was your degree in? <laughs> Business management. <laughs> I think you made the right choice. And he, and he just knocked every bit of business management out of me in that second round. <laughs> Fucking hell. Congrats. But, um, yeah, uh, business management, yeah, you know, I couldn't tell you the first thing about it. <laughs> in the in my final year, I was just paying people to do my essays. So, well, yeah. Well, congrats on it, and welcome to the UFC. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Hold on right here. Dana Whitehead said that it was your will that earned you this contract. Talking When you talked about your story and talking about exiting that second and going to the third, um, he was going to have to kill you. What's your message going into the UFC in this uh, welterweight division and the fans that are listening now? What's your message to everybody? You better be good, whoever I'm fighting next, because I'm a fucking nightmare. I'm just like a, I'm, as, as old Uncle Chael says, I'm that kid at the wrestling tournament that just don't go away. You know, if you beat me once, you'll have to beat me again for, for me to even accept it. Um, I'm not really in a position to address the welterweight division. Uh, um, because I just want to fucking hit the Las Vegas Strip, mate, and have a good time. So I'm a, I'm a UFC fighter now. Oh, wait, let me. I'm a UFC fighter now. So uh, yeah, feels good. Fuck, I'm all for. F we'll address them next week. 
Congratulations. Congratulations on the contract and enjoy the trip. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.